Praise the Lord and welcome to today's worship service. Let us begin with a word of prayer. Everlasting Father, we want to thank you for your love upon our lives, just giving us an opportunity to worship you. We know you are a spirit and those who worship you must worship in spirit and truth. I pray for the working of the Holy Spirit upon all worshipers gathered here. And all worshipers joining us on YouTube. Lord, receive all the glory and all the honor. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's worship with this one song. I know not why God's wondrous praise. I know not why God's wondrous praise to me be of the Not why the world be twice in love Read before his own but I know I am believing and I'm persuaded that is ever to keep that which I permitted and to live against the day. I know the God is saving faith to me. chapter 20 from verse 1 I read so the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard he agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and he sent them into his vineyard about nine in the morning he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing he told them you also go and work in my vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right, whatever is right, as five. So they went. He went out again about noon, and about three in the afternoon, and did the same thing. About five in the afternoon, he went out and found still others standing around, he asked them. Why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they answer. He said to them, you also go and work in my vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his former, call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last one hired <clears throat> and going 
to the fast. The workers who were hired about five in the afternoon came and ate to receive the denarius. So when those who came who were hired first, they expected to receive more. But each one of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. These who were hired last worked only one hour, they say. And you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burning, who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, Am I not being unfair to you, friend? Don't you agree? Didn't you agree to work for denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the one who was I at last the same as I, I gave you. Do I have right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. Hallelujah. Amen. Infinite grace. What is the meaning of the word infinite? <coughs> Word infinite means very impossible to measure. It means boundless. It means without limits. What about the word grace? Grace of God means God's unmerited favor. The unmerited favor of God. Favor that we did not work for. Hallelujah. Amen. I pray that you may continue to mature spiritually even if you understand God's unmerited favor in your life. God's infinite favor upon your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Through the living word of God may we experience the working of the Holy Spirit at the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So we will be able to mature. No mature believers have discernment and they enjoy the guidance of the Holy Spirit and the working of the Holy Spirit upon their lives. Those who are immature spiritually, they have a tendency of comparing themselves with others. They have a tendency of always complaining and they don't acknowledge the grace of God, the infinite grace of the Lord upon their lives. So the passage that we have just read in Matthew chapter 20, it shows that unlimited, that boundless, that grace that is impossible to measure is being revealed in the text that we have just read. Hallelujah. Amen. And <clears throat> point number one, I'm going to talk about absolute, <coughs> absolute consciousness of grace. <clears throat> verse one and verse two. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and sent them into his vineyard. This landowner is the one who went out to look for workers. Workers who would work in his vineyard. Now what kind of workers were these? These were day workers. Workers who were hired just for that day. Though they were free they lived a more pathetic life than slaves. Because if they were not hired, they would not eat for that day. At least slaves can eat from their master each day. But these workers, 
were living from hand to mouth. So they were living a pathetic kind of life. And being able to be hired himself was grace. And this land owner was finding them, some in the marketplace, some out there, doing nothing because no one had hired them. And remember, if no one would hire them for a day, they would leave, they would even go without a meal for the day. Hallelujah. Amen. They should remind us of our situation, our helpless situation. That we could not meet God by our own ability. If God did not come for us, if God did not come uh, with His saving grace to us, we would not be able to meet, to receive salvation, we would not be able to be uh, saved. But God, out of His saving grace, He came to us. Hallelujah. Amen. And this landowner had this passion of going out. He went out early in the morning. He went out at nine. He went out at noon. He went out at three in the afternoon and at five to look for workers to work in his vineyard. Hallelujah. Amen. And when he brought these workers, what they needed to do is just be thankful for having been hired even for that day. Hallelujah. Amen. And when you see uh, verse 8, he started paying them. And verse 8 says, When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last one hired and going on to the first. He begins paying them. Verse 10, you see, so when those who were hired first, they expected to receive more, but each one of them also received a denarii. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 11, when they received it, they began to grumble against the land owner. People did not realize the grace of God. First, first place, they were jobless they were doing nothing and they forgot that they forgot the grace that has been shown to them and they began grumbling why have we been paid a denarius the way the, the people who work just for an hour were also paid a denarius these were people who were not uh, remembering the grace which was shown to them and they were grumbling remember uh, our Lord Jesus Christ loved us. He showed us His grace when we were in a state of helplessness. Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says, God demonstrated His own love for us in this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Hallelujah. Amen. And this matters of salvation, we can learn even more from one great reformist, John Calvin. When John Calvin talked about Salvation. He talked about the four in five important things, and I want to mention them quickly. First, he talked of total depravity, being that by themselves people cannot be saved. We are in a state of helplessness. We are we were dead, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. He said, As for you, you are dead in your transgression and sin, in which you used to live when you follow the ways of this world. And of the ruler of the kingdom of the earth, the spirit is now at work in those who are disobedient. The second thing he talked about is unconditional election. That's only by God's grace that we can be saved. God saved us unconditionally. He, the way the landowner went and picked workers for the day unconditionally. We were selected unconditionally by our Lord. And it was only by grace of God that Abraham was selected. Remember, before being called by God, Abraham was an idol worshiper. And God unconditionally selected him. And we have not been saved because of we are better than other people. 
God chose us as a condition. I emphasize this once more. Third thing that John Cavalli taught is, is limited atonement. There is a limited number of people to be saved. Not everybody is selected. But you and me who find Jesus believable are part of this blessing. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and 9 says, By grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from you, it is a gift of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, fifth uh, principle is irresistible grace. Every single one of the chosen has no choice but to experience the grace of God. All who are chosen by God, God gives them a uh, grace he allows them to experience his grace and the fifth one is the perseverance of the saints what does this teach us this means that god will take care of you until the end god did not leave the saint to be on their own he takes care of them hallelujah Amen. that's why i'm saying the saved are the guarantee of eternal life you want to be who are saved of a guarantee of eternal life. Now, these five principles show that our salvation comes from absolute grace of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I bless you in the name of the Lord. May you live your life within 24 hours con consciousness of the grace and thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Amen. There is no need compare yourself with others the way these workers who came early in the morning started comparing themselves with those who came late and grumbling why have we been paid equally when you compare yourself with others you will have resentment and you will continue living a life of unhappiness in your life why because that kind of comparing yourself with others and happiness is creating a conducive environment for the devil to continue to attack you. Do not be caught by Satan. Point number two, absolute consciousness of thanksgiving. Verse 13 uh, says this, But he answered one of them, Am I not being unfair to you, friend? Don't you agree? Didn't I agree to work? Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Hallelujah. Amen. They all agreed, the ones who came early, they agreed with the landowner that for the whole day they work for a denarius. And you don't have the right to judge what God chooses to do. Hallelujah. Amen. For those of us who receive salvation earlier, we need to live within the grace of thanksgiving before our Creator God. Hallelujah. Amen. This one pleases God. Who says, Be thankful always. Give thanks in all circumstances. Apostle Paul had great thanksgiving for salvation. That's why he said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. By the grace of God, I am what I am. He did not have a reason to boast before people. He acknowledged that it is by the grace of God. Hallelujah. May we all acknowledge that we are what we are. By the grace of God. In conclusion, realize the heart of God towards one important soul. You see, the land of honor had a passion of looking for workers. Early in the morning, he went out and looked for workers. At nine in the morning, he went out and looked for workers. At noon, at three in the afternoon, and at five in the afternoon. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us do a non-stopping challenge because there are so many people prepared out there to be saved. Hallelujah. Amen. God has prepared him. That's why he says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. The Lord wants us to be his witnesses to the ends of the earth. 
So you want us to go and preach to all position. Mark 16, verse 15 to verse 20. You want us to make disciples of all nations. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us embrace his desire. And let us be used in his mighty and everlasting hands. Let us pray. The everlasting Father, I want to thank you for your love upon our life. I want to thank you, oh my God, for the infinite grace that you showed upon our life. May each and every one of us live a life full of thanksgiving because of this grace, because of the saving grace upon our life. May none of us live a life of comparing him or ourselves with others. May none of us live a life of resentment, a life of grumbling. But may we be full of thanksgiving because you will rest upon our life. Lord Jesus, may we uh, take our steps in your harvest field with the passion that the landowner had looking for workers. Thank you, everlasting Father, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.